All right, so we are back looking at the unused and cut video game content iceberg. And if you've seen part one, you already know what this is all about. In the first part, we looked at the first two tiers, but now we're going into tiers three and four. Getting a little bit more interesting and obscure with these topics. And again, this is part two, so if you wanna see part one, I will leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. But before we get started, I would like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, World of Warships. Now you've probably heard of this game before. I mean, it has more than 44 million players. But if you somehow haven't, well, let me show you what you were missing out on. World of Warships is a free to play sea battle game available right now on PC. And it's awesome. The game features over 400 different historically accurate ships that you can use in battle and can control in epic fights on the sea. The game also just has amazing graphics, especially for a free to play game. And of course you can choose to play this game solo, but I personally think it's a lot more fun to play with friends, especially in a division. So hop in and employ five different kinds of warships, including destroyers, battleships, cruisers, aircraft carriers, and even submarines. It's honestly one of the funnest free-to-play games out there. So if you're interested, give it a try and hop onto World of Warships. And if you do decide to do so, make sure to hit the link in the description and receive a huge starter pack. You can also use the code FIRE to get 200 doubloons, premium battleship USS Texas, 20 of the Restless Fire camouflages, 1 million credits, and 7 days of a premium account. Thanks again to World of Warships. Now back to the video. Celestial Tools, Terraria. Okay, so in Terraria, once you get to hard mode, some of the final bosses that you fight are these various towers that are called the Celestial Pillars. Each of the various pillars are unique, which has different enemies and different rewards when you finally destroy them. These are the Solar Pillar, the Vortex Pillar, Nebula Pillar, and Stardust Pillar, which will all give you a different fragment corresponding to that pillar which can then be used to craft various items, including a Luminite pickaxe. Which as far as I'm aware, these are the second strongest pickaxes in the game, with them only being beaten out by the laser drill narrowly. However, in terms of actual tools, you can only use these fragments to make a hammax or a pickaxe, as well as a variety of weapons and armor. Although it was found that there existed Luminite hammers and axes, although they are unattainable and cannot actually be crafted. And these were most likely scrapped in order to just have a ham axe which served both purposes. Removed weapons, Terraria. Okay, so there are quite a few unobtainable and removed weapons in Terraria. Of course there are the Luminite axes and hammers we talked about earlier, but there were also Luminite chainsaws, which I guess could also be included in the previous entry. There's also a prototype of the Terrablade sword called the First Fractal, an unobtainable skull bow, and even an axe called Soul Scythe, which was a reference to the Soul Eater anime franchise, which may have been the reason for its removal. There was also even an NES Zapper-like gun called the Zappinator, which was removed for obvious reasons. Mario Kart Wii Mission Mode So this was a unused and incomplete game mode that would have been available in Mario Kart Wii, that would most likely function similarly to the Mario Kart DS version of Mission Mode. However, the Wii version was eventually cancelled and hidden away within the files, and was replaced by Tournament Mode. The Mission Mode, however, would have had the player go through a series of challenges, about 64 in fact, with increasing difficulty, where in which the player would have to complete a certain objective within a time limit. Some of these objectives have even been revealed within the game's files, such as completing laps, getting certain drift scores, breaking item boxes, hitting enemies, gathering coins, and even performing wheelies. And it's actually even possible to play this mode, albeit in a very buggy state using cheat codes. So yeah, it doesn't work too well. And it also has the potential to damage your save file, so be careful. Patrick's Dream Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yet another piece of cut content from Battle for Bikini Bottom. So if you've played the game, you probably remember Patrick's Dream. Or maybe you don't, because it's so strange and short. It's literally just the blankness of Patrick's mind where he gives Spongebob a spatula. There's really no other gameplay to it. And yeah, it's kind of a funny joke about the character, but this wasn't the original planned level for Patrick's Dream. 
In fact, it would have included an entire platforming section rather than whatever this was. And while the level was never finished and went unused, it can actually still be loaded and played within the original version of the game by manipulating some files. However, obviously it's not finished and it's extremely buggy. Although you can definitely see what they were trying to go for here, and there are even enemy placements, environmental hazards, and even a golden spatula at the end of it. Oh yeah, and because the skybox doesn't really work properly, this ends up happening when you try to play the level, making it a pretty trippy experience. Glove World, Battle for Bikini Bottom. So unlike Patrick's Dream, you can't actually find this level within the game's files. And as far as we know, it wasn't actually even made and may have only been a planned feature. The only actual reference to its existence at all within the game was found in an early version of the pause menu that was accessed through the game's files when looking through the taxi system, which showed an area called Glove World. Although some theorize that this may have just been an early version of the Goo Lagoon level. Or maybe they did plan on making Glove World but it was scrapped early on in development. Either way, this supposed area is completely cut from the game entirely. Yoshi, Super Mario Brothers. Okay, so this one was a little confusing to research, and granted, I don't know very much about Mario at all. But what I think this is referring to is Yoshi being in Super Mario Bros. 1. And it was merely the concept, the idea behind Yoshi that was cut from this game. As Miyamoto wanted Mario to ride a dinosaur-like creature throughout the game, although due to the technical limitations of the NES, this couldn't really be done. And so, Yoshi wasn't officially introduced until Super Mario World. Hino Curry, Super Mario Sunshine. So in Super Mario Sunshine, there's a pretty strange, unused giant enemy called Hino Curry 2. Although this is only his name within the actual files. But if the enemy was spawned into the game, it would proceed to drop the swoop and stew enemies from a nozzle on its back. And the player would fight it by spraying water at it until its outer shell would pop. To which then Mario could simply jump on it until it dropped one coin. Blarg, Super Mario 64. So Blarg is of course an enemy that is found in Super Mario World. However, Super Mario 64 also contained an unfinished model for a Blarg enemy. Although it does appear eyeless and untextured. With a couple of animations that show him sitting in lava and jumping out of it. And some additional code related to the enemy was even found during the Nintendo Giga Leak. Rosalina and Super Mario Odyssey. So this one is pretty simple. It essentially just refers to this scrapped piece of concept art of what Rosalina would look like in the Super Mario Odyssey art style or game which shows her wearing a t-shirt and jeans as well as playing the guitar. This piece of concept art was found in the Art of Super Mario Odyssey book, which released in Japan in 2018. Gears, Minecraft. So gears were a type of block that were added to Minecraft on January 28, 2010. However, as early as July 2nd, they were completely removed from the game, as they didn't have any clearly defined purpose or functionality. And for the brief time that Gears were actually in Minecraft, they could only be obtained through the use of inventory editors. As for the purpose of Gears, we can only really speculate. Although some people think it would have been somewhat of a precursor to Redstone. Which was added into the game around the time Gears were completely removed. Hat Adult, a hat in time. So this was simply an adult version of Hat Kid that was scrapped from the final game who appeared in a brief playable segment of the alpha and beta versions of the game. Although it was later stated in an interview by one of the developers that Hat Adult would play a more significant role in the story, similar to what Adult Link did in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And it was said that the game would even feature a time branching mechanic where you could play as the Hat Adult representing different timelines. However, this all was of course cut from the final game although her model and animations can still be found in the game files. Additional subjects, Baldi's Basics. So if you've ever played Baldi's Basics before, you probably know that when you go into the classroom to answer a question, it's always a math related one, even when going to separate classrooms. However, that wasn't originally the intention of the developer. He actually wanted to include a different subject for every classroom including science, spelling, geology, English, history, math, and geography. 
However, he realized that subjects like history and spelling might alienate players that don't actually live in the USA. And so, in the original version of the game, there is of course only math. However, there is an unused voice clip from Baldi relating to the spelling subject. And through hacking, there were a bunch of unused assignments for every subject in the game, each represented by a different colored notebook. Piranha Plant's third jump, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So this one is pretty self-explanatory. The Piranha Plant character, which was added into the cast of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, was originally planned to have a third jump instead of just two. And there's even an unused animation related to this third jump that was found in the game's files. And I don't really play this game at all, but according to some of the tier lists I looked at, yeah, this guy probably could have used that third jump. Beta Costumes, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So this just refers to beta recolors of certain characters that weren't present in the final release of the game. Such as for Ridley, Ice Climbers, Pokemon Trainer, and Villager. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty simple. Unused Playtime and Principle Lines, Baldi's Basics. So there are actually quite a few pieces of cut audio that were either removed in updates from the game's files, or were cut from the game before it was even released. Some of the most well-known ones, however, are the cut principal voice lines. But they are pretty basic, telling the player not to run in the halls, things like that. However, there were also cut whistling lines, which may have been planned to be used to alert the player of the principal's presence throughout the game. As for the character of Playtime, well, there's quite a few cut voice lines as well. Mostly related to her jump rope, including one where she would teach the player how to actually use the jump rope. Goggles, Sonic the Hedgehog. So for the original release of Sonic the Hedgehog for the Genesis in 1991, there are these cut monitors in the game that are only visible if you fly over the goal in debug mode or use a level wrapping glitch. One of these monitors that could be viewed showed a pair of goggles, which ended up being unused in the final game, and some people theorized that they might have actually been one of Sonic's power-ups originally. Because in the 2013 remake of the game, Sonic can now actually break the goggles monitor, which will give him the goggles when he appears underwater. Which actually increases the time you can spend underwater without air. And the actual sprites for this goggles power-up were taken from the original files of the game. However, one of the developers of the remake has stated that the original goggles from the 1991 version were never actually meant to be a power-up. And were instead just a cosmetic graphic. The door behind the cleric beast, Bloodborne. So if you've never played Bloodborne before, I think it could be best described as Lovecraftian, Gothic, Mysterious, Dark. Any of these adjectives could really be used to describe not only the locations, bosses, and monsters, but also just the game's overall atmosphere. And when playing the game and coming across what is called the Grey Bridge, you'll find yourself fighting the first boss of the game, the Cleric Beast. And beyond him, at the end of the bridge, you'll find this seemingly innocuous door which has no prompt and can actually be opened through normal means. But if you manage to make your way past the door, you'll end up finding a very empty area, although there is a strange lever hidden beneath the area. And although it can be pulled, it does nothing. However, it's thought that this door was actually a planned shortcut that could be accessed later on through the game, when you find a door that looks very similar to the other side of that door on the Great Bridge, which also cannot be opened at all throughout the game. However, in an alpha version of Bloodborne, there was actually a prompt for this shortcut door, although that ended up being cut, of course. And interestingly, in this area, for the alpha version of Bloodborne, there was a very creepy soundtrack that would be played in this area called False God Hymn, which would have been used for the amygdala boss, although it was eventually changed into another soundtrack. Unused Costumes, Super Mario Odyssey. So in Super Mario Odyssey, there are a ton of unused and cut costumes in the game, such as a Link costume. There was also a different Diddy Kong outfit that was found in the files that had different textures from the one found in the game. But those are just the ones found in the files. In terms of unused concepts and artwork, there are a ton. Like literally pages worth of artwork full of different costumes for Mario that never actually made it into the game, unfortunately. Latikin, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. So this was actually a cut Pokemon from the Ruby and Sapphire beta versions that was called by fans Latikin. 
as it appears similar to Latius and Blaziken. But we have no real official name of what this Pokemon would have been, as it ended up being cut from Ruby and Sapphire, and its only appearance was in the beta versions of these games. Purple Yoshi and Brown Yoshi, Yoshi's Story. So in early builds of the game, there was apparently going to be playable brown and purple Yoshis, as seen in early footage from the game as well as some screenshots. However, these two ended up being replaced by pink and white Yoshi in the final game. River Monster, Red Dead Redemption 2. I know we just kind of speed ran through a lot of those really simple ones, but this one is pretty interesting, I think. And as we all know, Rockstar loves to put their cryptids and urban legends in their games. So I don't think it's really that surprising that this audio called a river monster was found in the game's files. Although still, it's pretty unsettling. But it's not just the audio file that was found in the game's files. There's actually a file name that's called a underscore c underscore river monster 01, which was actually meant to be a model. Although it was never actually fully created. And instead, we're just left with this string of text. And interestingly enough, this entity could actually be looted and would contain crustacean meat, although the river monster could not be skinned like other animals. Although it's really unknown how this river monster would have interacted with the world or whether it would have been a part of some sort of mission. Regardless, it's a very interesting piece of unused and cut content and a very interesting gaming mystery as a whole. Unused animations, Team Fortress 2. So since there's so much unused and cut content from TF2, there is a load of animations that go with those things. For one, there were actually grenades that were planned to be in Team Fortress 2, which were complete with holster and unholster animations that were found within the game's files. There were also a series of cut burning animations, which were all most likely unique death animations for the different classes throughout the game. There's also a ton of unique robot animations for the man vs machine mode which ended up being cut from the game. As well as additional cut taunts and cut weapon animations. Although Valve has gone on to add previously unused emotes in the past in updates. So who knows, maybe at some point Valve will have a use for all these unused animations. Although I kinda doubt it, they never really update this game. <clears throat> Alright, moving on. Final level, Metal Gear Solid 5. Okay, I never really talked about this in the first part when I mentioned Metal Gear Solid 5, but really, this game is the holy grail of unused and cut content. I mean, I already love the game as is, but looking at this huge list, I just feel like the game is incomplete. There's just so much. But if you've played and beaten the game before, you'll know the game ends with Mission 46. However, of course, there were many planned missions beyond that, as we already covered the cut episode 51 in part 1 of this iceberg. But episode 51 wasn't the final mission either, or at least it wasn't meant to be. It was actually going to be somewhat of an extra epilogue mission rather than the official conclusion, with episode 50 being the final level in terms of the main story, I guess. But this whole thing is very confusing because there are actually missions 47 through 50, However, they're not new missions, rather they are just extreme versions of previous missions, and mission 46 is the actual last new mission in the game. The point is though, we were going to get a different final level from what we got. And we don't know for sure what the final mission would have looked like, but on the official Metal Gear Twitter account, it was stated that the lost mission 51 was definitely not going to be the ending. Anyway, there's a whole lot more you can dig into with the ending of Metal Gear Solid as well as other planned features and missions, but I'll just leave it here for now. So I'm pretty sure this is referring to the game Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Hunter Coliseum, which had a ton of unused and cut monsters in the game. There's actually 77 unused monsters that were found in the game code that cannot be obtained. However, they can be hacked into a player's inventory, and after this, they do actually become playable within the game. Although some have incomplete stats, missing models, and sometimes even just placeholder art. Even so, they still all have completed battle animations, which is pretty interesting. Skinless Hush, Binding of Isaac. So in Binding of Isaac, there's a boss called Hush, which is this weird thing that starts off looking kind of like Isaac, but then turns into this thing. However, what some people might not know is that there was this very creepy, unused, and unfinished sprite for a skinless hush. 
which was found in the game's files for Binding of Isaac Rebirth. And although it is unused, it has since been made into a mod that you can actually use to replace the skin of a standard Hush with the skinless Hush. It's also been stated that the skinless Hush was never actually planned to be used and was simply a red herring left for data miners. Early Character Designs, Ace Attorney So in one of the official Japanese guidebooks for the series, some concept art for early character designs were revealed. Some characters, such as Phoenix Wright, were a lot more subdued and kind of basic, but then there were ones like Miles Edgeworth, which were completely different from what we ended up with. Spore, 2005 so when the video game Spore was first showcased and demonstrated at GDC 2005, there were a lot of listed and shown features that ended up being removed or were possibly cut from the game. For example, blood had actually been seen in one of the demos. However, that was of course eventually removed as they wanted to make the game more appropriate for younger audiences. Behaviors of the various creatures were also different and tended to actually be a little bit more realistic than what we see in the game nowadays. There were also various tools that were removed, such as a hut editor, as well as shops which were only a concept but were never actually put into the game. And there was also apparently even going to be a feature where you could kidnap members of another tribe and convert them into your own. Even being able to kidnap babies from another tribe. Yeah. And there's a whole host of other things that were cut or removed from the 2005 demo version of Spore. And among those were the various stages, which, speaking of, Aquatic Stage, Spore. So this was an unreleased and removed stage from Spore that never actually made it into the final version of the game. In the stage itself, it was said there were going to be various different kinds of creatures, such as different fish, amphibians, and reptiles. And there is even some concept art of the designs of these various creatures. There were also concepts of underwater civilizations that were going to be introduced, but among other things, there were a lot of problems going into the design of this stage. Such as the environment just being very glitchy due to the amount of animations that were going to be used, as the aquatic world was said to be very large. There were also issues with the textures and the camera, I mean it was just kind of a mess. And so the stage was cut, never to be added back into the game as of yet. Forbidden 7, Super Smash Bros Brawl. So the Forbidden 7 as they are called, or sometimes also known as the Forgotten 7, are 7 characters who never actually made it into Super Smash Bros Brawl. These 7 including Roy, Mewtwo, Dr. Mario, Dixie Kong, Toon Zelda, Tetra or Toon Sheik, and Plusil and Minun. Now, these characters obviously weren't included in the actual game, and the only reason they're even known to exist at all is because their names were found on a Smash Bros. sound file by hackers. And this is really the only evidence of their existence within the game, besides a couple of internal sound references. So yeah, these were most likely planned, but never actually created characters for Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Punk Click Bully. So the punks were a clique that were actually cut very early in the development of Bully. And they are actually officially shown in the comic strip that comes with the limited edition of Bully. With four of the five known members being shown in the comic strip. And due to some data mining, we actually found out quite a bit of interesting information about the punks. First of all, we have a couple of character models that were going to be used for the click, as well as the fact that there was actually going to be a whole different system in regards to bullying in the game, where it was planned that some non-click students would bully other non-click students, but due to the difficulty of programming this, the bullying students were actually given their own click. And so instead of using the punks as a click, they split it up into the bullies and the dropouts. And interestingly enough, the leader of the dropouts click uses one of the models that would have been used for the punks. Yummer. Okay, so if you watch Oddheader's videos, you might have heard about this one. So in a seemingly innocuous Spongebob Flash game released in 2019 titled Spongebob Saves the Day, there was a pretty disturbing discovery within the game's files. That being this graphic right here, called the Yummer within the files. And yeah, it's pretty disturbing, especially for being in a kid's game, right? 
but it was eventually discovered that he originally was created about 10 years ago as a modeling test. And the model was used at the office as sort of a joke, but also just a placeholder as it was very recognizable. And of course, as we know, they forgot to remove him. Whoops. Character D, Pikmin 3. So Pikmin 3 went through many changes during its development, many which were actually seen in the beta version of the game, as there was a lot of content from this beta that ended up being unused or cut entirely. But one of these characters that was cut wasn't even shown in the beta, and didn't actually even appear in the game at all in any way and was only shown off at E3 2012, and was only known as the character D. And it's thought by fans that he may have been one of the playable captains at one point. Rubies, Minecraft. So before emeralds, rubies were actually going to be used as trading currency for villagers in the Minecraft Java Edition 1.3. However, interestingly enough, the reason they changed from rubies to emeralds was because one of the game's developers, Dinnerbone, actually suffered from some red-green colorblindness, and therefore would have a hard time differentiating between redstone ore and ruby ore. Which, yes, was actually going to be mineable. And a lot of the textures and files related to rubies still exist within Minecraft's files. Adhesion Gel, Portal 2. So Adhesion Gel was a cut gel type from Portal 2 that was meant to function as somewhat of a sticky gel which would allow the player to actually walk on walls and ceilings of test chambers. However, when the final game was released, the adhesion gel which was found within the files actually had no effect, and it ended up being removed before the game was released. As to why this concept was scrapped, it was stated in the final hours of Portal 2 developer commentary, that playtesters using this adhesion gel became very disoriented when trying to do test chamber puzzles while being upside down and sideways on the walls. However, the adhesion gel has been used and re-implemented in many community maps and mods. Scarecrow, Manhunt. So as a quick side note, Manhunt is one of my favorite games. It's truly a unique horror stealth experience. But in both of the games, there's quite a bit of cut content. Unsurprisingly, because both of these games are extremely controversial, as they're known for their extreme violence. So yeah, no surprise that there's a lot of cut content within these games. And sometime, maybe I'll do a deep dive into all the cut content from both of these games. But for now, we're talking about Scarecrow, which is a very interesting cut character who would have acted as the former leader of the gang, the Smileys, and was actually shown through a piece of concept art that he was actually responsible for the quote, Pigsy debacle. If you played the game, I think you know what I'm talking about. Interestingly, he would have acted similarly to the Tramp in the game, where he could have been encountered as merely a homeless person, at least at first glance, before donning his mask and becoming the Scarecrow, wielding a homemade axe. And this could have honestly been a really interesting mechanic and boss fight if that's what they were going for. So like a lot of other cut content from this game, it's really a shame Scarecrow didn't make it into the final game. Undead King Jayurl, Dark Souls. So this was a cut and unused boss from the original Dark Souls, which was unofficially named Undead King Jayurl. It's unknown exactly where this boss fight would have taken place, although a lot of people seem to think it would have been located in New Londo ruins. Other than that, it was also found that the character would have actually used a moveset similar to Old King Alant from Demon's Souls. The boss itself also would have had a unique curved greatsword, as well as a unique light armor set which might have been available to the player upon completing this boss fight. Other than that though, it remains unclear why this was actually cut from the game. Prometheus, Batman Arkham Knight. This one's pretty simple and straightforward. But basically, one of the DLCs for Batman Arkham Knight was called Season of Infamy. And from this DLC, two key characters ended up being cut. Those being Black Mask and Prometheus. However, there's not really that much to look into here. And besides a couple references within the game's files, there was this piece of concept art for Prometheus, but that's pretty much it. Unused Potions, 
Minecraft. So there's a couple of potions as well as some status effects that remain unused in Minecraft. Firstly, there's a potion called the Uncraftable Potion for obvious reasons, which really just serves as a general placeholder for potions and potion effects within the game's files. There was also found to be potions that give negative effects, such as things like Wither, Nausea, stuff like that. Although these also cannot be crafted or brewed. Unused Yuri and Natsuki Expressions, Doki Doki Literature Club. So this is another pretty basic one, just some unused expressions from two of the characters. And I guess this one for Natsuki was actually removed in one of the updates. Although these creepy ones for Yuri stayed for whatever reason. Alternate costumes, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. So this one's pretty interesting because this game is pretty new and it actually came out only a little over a month ago from when this video is being made. Anyway, there's quite a lot of cut content from this game, including cut characters, levels, concept arts, items. I mean, there's really a lot here, but perhaps one of the most interesting cut features from the game is actually alternate costumes as there actually were several icons located within the game's files that infer some kind of alternate costume feature for characters. Not only that, there were also a bunch of alternate costumes that were actually leaked via data miners. Some of them are unfinished, but a lot of them look pretty good. So hopefully at some point these get finished and added into the game officially. Checkered balls in Green Hill Zone, Sonic the Hedgehog. So these checkered boulder things that would have appeared in Green Hill Zone were shown in early screenshots of the game. And it was planned to serve a variety of functions, such as it would actually be an obstacle that would chase the player in certain sections of the level. And it was also planned to be used by Sonic to break through certain walls in the game. However, none of this ended up being implemented, and it can only be found via the debug mode. However, it did end up being restored in the 2013 remake. Test. Super Smash Bros. Melee. So this was just a simple test level found in the debug menu of Super Smash Bros. Melee. It's also sometimes known as the test stage, the coffee shop, the pub, and the bar. The reason it has all these nicknames? is because the background of the level is a real life picture, although it is very low quality and it's kind of hard to tell what it actually is. Although eventually it was actually found out that it was a real life coffee shop located in Palo Alto, California. Besides this, the level just consists of some really basic gray polygons used as platforms. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Splatoon early content found in Super Mario Maker. So this is pretty much what it sounds like. So found within the files of Super Mario Maker through data mining, various beta elements from Splatoon were found. You can find many pieces of gear, weapons, and even special weapons within these files. And it's pretty interesting as some look extremely different from what they would end up looking like in the final version. ELH.SPZ Luigi's Mansion. So this refers to an unused beta model from Luigi's Mansion, which never actually made it into the final game. Although some speculate that this model might have once belonged to a boss fight that went unused in the final version. And after some digging around in the files, it was found out that this model was actually made one month after the E3 presentation. And the model surprisingly had six different animations attached to it even though it was most likely lacking a texture, as this was probably not what it was intended to look like. 98 Robot, Undertale. So 98 Robot was one of the deleted and removed NPCs from the game, but surprisingly, he was almost fully developed. The dialogue that this character had is unknown, however it's said that he would have appeared in the Hotland region. Other than that though, not much else is known about this NPC. Although it has been theorized that the reason he was removed was because he didn't fit in with Metaton's presence. Unused Colossi, Shadow of the Colossus. It's been stated by the original creator of Shadow of the Colossus that there was originally going to be 48 Colossi, although that number was eventually cut down to just 24. However, that was only when they started working on the models. By the time the game was actually finished, there were only 16 Colossi found within the game. So in total, there are 10 cut colossi that we have seen in art books. However, there are probably a lot more than that that were actually cut and never made it to the artwork phase. As through some data mining for the PS3 version of the game, it was found that there were many unknown colossi names found within the PS3 sheets. 
Purple Rabbit, Super Mario 64 DS. Ah, Super Mario 64. I guess it doesn't really matter what version it is, there's always going to be some cut and lost content. This entry though simply refers to this image of a purple rabbit that's found on the manual of Super Mario 64 DS, as this rabbit doesn't actually appear anywhere in the game. And so it's led to many theories and conspiracies on how to obtain or unlock it. Although none of that has ever been found, and we don't actually know what the purpose of this purple rabbit really is. Early and unused plants and zombies. Plants vs zombies. So there's actually quite a few plants and zombies that never actually made it into the final game. And some of these are really interesting. So first, for plants, we had the cherry hover bomb which operated very similarly to the cherry bomb, so it's unsurprising this was left out. Then there was the stinger, which was like a bee-like plant that could only shoot at flying enemies, although it could also be planted on top of other plants. Then there was iceberg lettuce, which was pretty much the same thing as the cabbage pulp, although it would also slow enemies as well. There were also quite a few unused zombies, as well as some concept art of early zombies such as an unused mother type zombie, a dog zombie, and even a dog walking zombie. Mr. Friendly, Half-Life. Now, there's a lot of creepy stuff in the Half-Life games. A lot of stuff that's actually in the games and a lot of stuff that was cut. And this, I've gotta say, is definitely one of the more disturbing ones I've come across. So this is Mr. Friendly, and contrary to his name, he is anything but friendly. He's actually one of the cut alien enemies from Half-Life. Now its design is said to be that of a small horse, if you can even call it that. And the creature itself was meant to scavenge and shuffle around the map, eating the corpses of dead enemies. It was also said to attack the player, even being able to knock the weapon out of your hand. Now all of that is pretty disturbing enough, right? Well the backstory behind the creation of this thing is even more interesting, I think. So one of the developers at Valve, Ken Birdwell, was looking for concept art for enemies in Half-Life, and actually found an unlikely artist in his friend's 12-year-old brother. And so Birdwell asked his friend's brother to draw up some sketches of possible monsters. And uh, yeah, I think you know where I'm going with this. This thing was designed by a 12-year-old. And not only that, Gabe Newell actually loved it. And so they did actually plan to put this in the game. There is even a model in everything. Now, there is one other glaring thing that I haven't really mentioned yet. I also don't think YouTube would really like it if I went into too much detail. But let's just say this creature had some sexual undertones, to say the least. Which probably had something to do with it being cut from the game. Isle Delfino on Globe, Super Mario Odyssey. So this refers to Isle Delfino being a part of the Super Mario Odyssey world at one stage in development before being cut at some point. As far as I could tell though, the only hint to this being true is that in one of the globe textures, Isle Delfino can actually be seen on the map. However, of course, it was never officially implemented into the game. Battle Damage, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. So a really interesting planned but ultimately cut feature from Super Smash Bros. Brawl was Battle Damage, which would merely be a cosmetic difference to the character after sustaining an amount of damage during combat. And a couple of textures relating to this feature have been found in the game's files, showing the damaged versions of Captain Falcon, Meta Knight, Link, Marth, Ike, and Lucas. Unused Character Animations Super Smash Bros. Brawl. So a couple of characters in the game had some unused and cut animations. Overall though, they're pretty basic stuff. Such as an alternate landing for Captain Falcon, animations for a cut Kirby hammer attack, and even a cut animation for Fox and Falco's pistols misfiring. And there's a couple others, but they're pretty basic stuff. Dinosaur Planet. So before Star Fox Adventures was released in 2002, the game was first known as Dinosaur Planet. However, this game, Dinosaur Planet, that was being developed by Rare, was not actually initially a Star Fox game at all, and was instead a standalone title that was going to be released on the N64 rather than the Nintendo GameCube. However, Nintendo found that the game had a lot of similarities to the Star Fox series, 
And so I guess to avoid confusion or something, they just made it into a Star Fox game. However, interestingly enough, in February of 2021, the original Nintendo 64 version of Dinosaur Planet was found. It had been discovered by a video game preservation group called Forest of Illusion, who acquired a disc from a Swedish collector that contained a build of Dinosaur Planet dated December 1st, 2000. And the game has since been released online and is playable. Although the ROMs are known to be pretty glitchy on emulators. Dragon King, the fighting game. So this game kind of has a similar case to Dinosaur Planet. What I mean by that is this was also an unfinished game, which was originally of course called Dragon King the Fighting Game. That was a low budget 3D fighting game that was planned to be a series that would be developed for the Nintendo 64. However, it was eventually decided at one point that the game would use Nintendo's characters. Yeah, I think you all know where this is going. This game became the original Super Smash Bros. And we all know the game became incredibly popular after that, and the rest is history. However, all we have of the original Dragon King the Fighting Game are a couple of screenshots. But from what we can see, the game wasn't that far into development. There weren't even really characters or backgrounds, as they just used placeholders at the time. The Sonic the Hedgehog Band, Sonic the Hedgehog. So in a lot of the Sonic games, including the original game Sonic the Hedgehog, there's a feature called the Sound Test, which allows you to listen to sounds or music found within the game. However, one of the earlier ideas for the Sound Test was a little bit more complicated. It was called the Sonic the Hedgehog Band, and it would feature, of course, Sonic as well as many new characters. However, this concept, as well as many of the characters, ended up being cut due to time constraints. Robotnik was originally the main character. Oh boy, we're getting to the real juicy ones now. So this was kind of hard to find information on, but I'll tell you what I think this means. So in 1990, Sega wanted something to combat Nintendo's Mario franchise. They needed something as iconic that could not only serve as their mascot, but also be a game series to rival Mario. And the way they sought to do this was having a character design competition. And among them was of course Robotnik, although he wasn't known by that, or Eggman, or anything yet. However, this character did not win the contest, because as we all know, Sonic became the mascot of Sega. But funnily enough, Sonic and Robotnik were both designed by the same person, Naoto Oshima. During development of Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis, they liked Robotnik's design so much that they actually took that character and retooled him into the game's antagonist. And well, yeah, the rest is history. Sonic Surfing, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. So in Sonic the Hedgehog 3, there was an unused surfboard intro sequence where Sonic would surf his way onto Angel Island. And some of the sprites from this sequence still remain in the game and can be accessed via the debug mode. Blushing Chris, Deltarune Chapter 2. So this is a pretty simple and straightforward one. Found within the files of Deltarune Chapter 2, an unused sprite for Chris was found, showing the character both walk and stand while blushing. Similar sprites were also found for the character of Ralse. Willy Wombat design by Butch Hartman, Crash Bandicoot. So before you had the titular character Crash Bandicoot, there was Willy Wombat, which was created all the way back in 1994. And one of the first artists that were brought on to design this new character of Willy Wombat was Butch Hartman, who you might recognize from his work on Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom for his unmistakable art style. And in a YouTube video, he even revealed some of the sketches that he made for this character. Although as we know, Willy Wombat ended up becoming Crash Bandicoot, so these were never used. Luigi and Sega GT Prototype Somehow Luigi just finds himself into the game files of literally everything. So in one of the prototype builds for Sega GT, a hidden secret race was found called Sony GT2. And within this race holding the flag was found none other than Mario's brother, Luigi. And it's thought that this was merely a joke done by the developers as this prototype build was never meant to be released commercially at all. It's still really interesting though that this was found within the game, especially because, you know, Sega and Nintendo were basically sworn rivals back then. Naked Wario, WarioWare Inc, 
Mega Micro Games. Boy, that title. So this was a very strange find from WarioWare Inc. And it's just as the title suggests. And yeah, there were sprites found of a naked Wario. It's easy to see why this was cut from a kid's game, although I'm really just left here wondering why these were even made at all. But uh, yeah, who knows what they were going for with this. Cult ending, Dream Daddy. So this is apparently a dad dating simulator, which was actually made by the Game Grumps. Yeah. Anyway, so one of the secret endings in the game is called the Cult Ending otherwise known as Escape from Margarita Zone. However, it actually wasn't officially implemented into the game, although it did end up being found in a old version of the game. And so after it was found, it was eventually added back into the game as an easter egg. The ending takes a pretty dark twist, and it's unlike any of the other endings in the game, but I'll let you experience that for yourself if you want to. Jester Titanfall 2. So Jester was a character that was found in the first Titanfall game, and he was also planned to be included in the campaign of Titanfall 2. However, he was at some point cut from the campaign, although a figure of Jester for Titanfall 2 was still eventually released by McFarlane Toys. Original Ending Conker's Bad Fur Day. So apparently, Conker's Bad Fur Day had an extremely dark cut ending. So dark, in fact, I'm gonna have to be careful with how I word this. But basically, as you know if you've played the game, it's essentially the opposite of a generic, cutesy platformer type game that were really popular around that time. And so the developers at Rare took it upon themselves to really invert every type of trope. And they thought, what better way to end this game than one final, uh... Basically what I'm trying to get at is by the end of the game, Conker would end himself. Which he would do with a gun while looking at himself in the mirror. But to end this off on kind of a funnier note, it was said by one of the lead designers of the game, Chris Sevor that the ending was cut because it didn't spot much for a sequel, rather than it just being extremely disturbing. Yeah, pretty wild. Cut enemies, Half-Life 2. So there are a ton of enemies that were cut from the Half-Life series, especially Half-Life 2, and I'll talk about a few of them here. So first there's the Combine Alien Assassin, which was found in the beta, as well as many of these other cut enemies. It was going to be an extremely swift enemy that could jump and attack the player very fast. And it's definitely got a really creepy design. However, the Combine Assassin was eventually reworked into what we now know is the Fast Zombie. There were also some cut enemies from the first game, which were planned to be included in the sequel. Those being the Hound Eye and Bull Squid. There was also a worm-like creature called the Hydra, which was showcased in an E3 map, as well as a giant Combine Guard Boss. There was also the Cremator or Combine Janitor, as well as a Combine female assassin, which were also cut. Death of Gordon Freeman, Half-Life Decay. So in 2001, Valve released a multiplayer-only expansion pack to their ever-popular first-person shooter, Half-Life. It's made to be a co-op multiplayer experience, played by two people working together to pass the game's levels. The game only shipped with 9 missions, however, although it was originally planned to have 12 campaign missions. And in one of the planned missions, simply referred to as Mission 9, it was found that there would be a scene in which Gordon was captured by soldiers, and it would be up to the two players to save him from his execution. However, if the players failed to do so, Gordon would actually be killed, and there were even unused animations found to show this as well as dialogue from the soldiers holding him. And using these animations and sounds as well as the map, a recreation has been made showing what the death of Gordon Freeman would have looked like in Half-Life Decay. Truly one of the most interesting pieces of cut content that I've ever seen in a Half-Life game. Atmosphere Pressure System, Bioshock. So Bioshock went through a ton of different developmental changes during its lifespan. 
with a lot of features being cut and a lot being added along the way. And one of these features that was planned for the game that was eventually removed was the atmospheric pressure system. It was a pretty complicated feature and would actually change a lot about the world, including the way plasmids, enemies, and weapons interacted, such as flames going farther under low pressure, things like that. However, this concept was eventually scrapped, as it would have been too hard to tell the differences in air pressure and know how the effects would play out inside the world. However, part of this mechanic was reused in Arcadia, and there's many pieces of artwork showcasing what these pressure systems would have looked like. And there were also many gene tonics that were planned to be associated with this mechanic that also had to be cut. Jeff Hardy, WWE Smackdown, here comes the pain. So there's a lot of wrestlers that were removed from this game, including which was Jeff Hardy, who was removed from the game due to being released from WWE in April of 2003. His wrestler in the game was first shown though in July of 2003 in a reveal trailer, although despite appearing in multiple trailers, he was never actually included in the game. Freezatron. Little Big Planet. Inside the game's files, an unused gameplay tool called Freezatron or Ice Hazard was found, although it could only be acquired through hacking. However, the tool can't actually be used, as it was probably compiled for an earlier build of the game. Other than that though, there is some leftover language data that mentions the tool, saying quote, I thought I told you to freeze. Fire, ice, electricity, and gas. But that's pretty much it. Early Enemies, Super Mario Galaxy. This game has a ton of unused content, and I know I say that a lot, but this game really does, including a lot of cut enemies. First there was an early boss called the Boss Crab in the files, which would later become Mega Leg. There was a fake toad enemy called the Kinopi. A large piranha plant called the Octopus Queen, I guess? I mean, these are all internal names, so they're probably not what they were meant to be called in the game. There was also this weird thing, the Tori Moti, and there's a lot more. So if you're interested, definitely check out the Cutting Room Floors page on Super Mario Galaxy. Samus's Naked Death Animation, Super Metroid. Oh boy. So apparently in the original Japanese version of Super Metroid, it was planned that when Samus would die and it was a game over, that Samus would actually appear naked. Although of course for obvious reasons this was never implemented in any version of the game. However in one of the ROMs there was an unused voice recording that was found, which one of the game's composers revealed was an unused death cry recording by Minako Himano. Although he said about the recording quote, We used the voice more carefully. When she dies, Himano did the voice, but it sounded too sexual, so we couldn't use it. As for proof of a naked Samus death animation, there really isn't any out there. At least that has been found anyway. Lives, Five Nights at Freddy's. In early versions of Five Nights at Freddy's, lives were actually going to be implemented into the game where you could only die so many times before running out of lives, at which point you would then be set all the way back to night one. Not only is there code that points to this being in the game, there are also text graphics which would have shown how many lives you had, which is still present within the game although it's not shown, and is automatically set to three. Rayman originally had limbs. So this just refers to early character designs of Rayman, in which he of course had limbs. However, one of the most interesting things about his design choice of being limbless is that it wasn't necessarily an artistic choice. Rather, it came about due to technical limitations when making the original game. Although that did prove to be a blessing in disguise, as many people loved this design of a character. And yeah, it definitely left its mark. It's very different from every other mascot that was going around at the time, and has now since become the most iconic feature of the character. Although it would have been interesting to see what he would have looked like with his early design. Unused Animal Helpers, Donkey Kong Country. So the Animal Buddies, or Animal Helpers, are a very iconic feature of the Donkey Kong games. And there were some unused and cut ones in Donkey Kong Country, which was revealed by one of the game's developers, Greg Maley's, on August 10th, 2018, when he revealed in a naming sheet for Donkey Kong Country a lot of differences. Most notably the name of the actual game, which would have been called Monkey Mayhem. 
But also on the sheet, two other animal buddies were found that were actually cut from the game. These being Hooter the Owl and Minnie the Mole. Hooter the Owl was probably cut for its similarities to the restaurant Hooters, for obvious reasons. But Minnie the Mole, I'm not sure why this guy was cut. Although maybe they'll return sometime in the future. Human mobs, Minecraft. So this is one of the more interesting Minecraft ones, I think. And surprisingly, it's kind of creepy. These so-called human mobs, which were known as monsters in the code, were actually hostile towards the player, and would appear with a default Steve-like skin. They were also said to spawn randomly throughout the world and would wander aimlessly, while flailing their arms and head around as they walked. I mean, just look at this animation. Imagine this thing chasing you down in your world. So yeah, I'm not really surprised these were cut, as they are just kind of confusing and, uh, weird. Left 4 Dead Original Survivors So yeah, we all know the iconic Left 4 Dead Survivors. You got Lewis, Bill, Francis, and Zoe, right? However, the original designs of our survivors were really different. Bill is pretty much the same, just has some different clothes. Francis, though, was incredibly different, having really long black hair as well as a beard. Lewis also looked very different, having short, curly black hair as well as a goatee. Zoe also had a very different outfit, having a pink hoodie as well as these strange pants and socks. Or whatever this is. All Bonds, GoldenEye007. So due to some of the promotional material surrounding this game, as well as some images found within the game's files, it was thought that you could play as all four different Bonds in the game, each based on the different actors that played 007. Some thought that this was just something cut from the game, and others thought it was actually just a hoax, similar to something like L is Real. But just like L is Real, the three Bonds were actually found within the ROM of the game including a portrait of the character as well as the textures that would accompany them. And in a recreation slash mod of the game called GoldenEye X, all bonds were included in the multiplayer of the game. Although in the original GoldenEye 007 game, Pierce Brosnan is the only playable James Bond. Original Endings Twisted Metal So there's a bunch of cut endings from Twisted Metal, which are known as the Lost Endings. A lot of them were cut due to quality concerns, as well as because of how cheesy and campy they were. The name of the game was also changed pretty late in development, and some of these endings were filmed before the name change, from High Octane to Twisted Metal. But now the lost endings are available on YouTube. 12 of them, in fact, where they can still be watched today, although they are in very poor quality. Yellow Switch, Super Mario 64. So the yellow switch, or the yellow cap switch, is an unused object that was found in Super Mario 64. Now, like anything found in Super Mario 64, there's a bunch of theories as to what this would have been for. Some think it was somehow related to the Koopa shell, and the reason it was cut was because the level design didn't really have a use for it. The reason this switch is thought to be related to the Koopa shells at all is because due to decompiling the code related to Super Mario 64, it was found that the yellow cap switch, when activated, would give the player a Koopa shell. However, if you try to do this in-game by spawning one of these yellow cap switches, the switch is already pressed, meaning it doesn't actually do anything. So we're only left to wonder what it would really do, as some believe that the Koopa shell was actually just a placeholder for maybe a different item or a different mechanic entirely. Chain Lightning Gun Quake so this was a weapon that was originally planned to be in the full version of Quake. However, it was of course eventually cut. The way it was planned to work was when zapping another player with it, it would chain lightning to any other player that they see. Hence the name Chain Lightning Gun. However, the only things we have to go on relating to its existence are the readme file which promised its existence within the game, as well as a HUD icon. But the Chain Lightning Gun was eventually retooled into Quake Mission Pack 2, Dissolution of Eternity, as the Plasma Gun. Original Story, Destiny So the creation of Destiny was pretty messy, to say the least, especially when it came to the story. The reason for this is one of the lead developers of the story, who's a veteran at Bungie, Joe Staten, presented what he called a supercut, showing the game's cinematics and major story beats within a video. But apparently the senior staff at Bungie didn't really like how the story panned out, and so they had to scrap that completely and start from scratch. 
devising an entirely new plot and story only a year before the game would release in 2014. And it's a shame, because a lot of people didn't like the story that Destiny shipped with at all. So who knows, maybe this lost and cut story was better than what we actually got. I mean, it probably was. But I guess we'll never truly know. Brick Pyramid, Minecraft. So apparently way back in the early days of Minecraft, there was a feature in which in your world, somewhere a huge pyramid structure made up of bricks would spawn. And this would actually at this point in the game be the only way to acquire bricks in survival mode. Strangely though, regardless of seed, the brick pyramids would always spawn in the same place in every world, relative to your spawn point. What I mean is, if you created a world and walked forward exactly 501 blocks and then turned left and continued for a couple hundred more blocks, you would always encounter a brick pyramid. And these things were huge, being made up of 43,680 brick blocks. Not surprisingly, this was removed pretty quickly in development. And as to why this even existed in the first place, some think it was merely used to test structure generation in worlds. But who knows. Sky Chase Dragon, Sonic Adventure. So the Sky Chase Dragon was an interesting cut entity that would appear in Sky Chase Act 2, and was featured in development screenshots of the game. However, it's of course missing from the final game, and it's not really known what it would have done or how it would have interacted in the game, although it was once again found in the files of Sonic Adventure DX. E3 Knuckles voice, Sonic Adventure. So as shown in the E3 1999 demo of Sonic Adventure, Knuckles had a very different voice. Although it was actually the same voice actor, they had just redone most of his lines. As the E3 version of Knuckles portrayed a very different character, giving a completely different vibe from what you'll find in Sonic Adventure. Terios, Sonic Adventure 2. So before you had the iconic Edgelord Shadow the Hedgehog, he was first originally conceived as Terios, or Terios? I don't really know. The name apparently derives from a Japanese verb that means to compare. Although that name was eventually scrapped and we were left with the much simpler and better sounding Shadow the Hedgehog. However, the various Sonic communities have taken it upon themselves to give this character a completely new life of its own, sporting an entirely different look and design when compared to the original Shadow the Hedgehog. Nails, Sonic Adventure 2. So this is essentially the same thing that happened with Shadow and Terios. This character Nails was the original version of Rogue the Bat. However, as we know, the name didn't stick very long. And like Terios and Shadow, there is no concept art showing this different version of Rogue. So as of now, it's merely a name change. Inherit the Nightmare Last Form, Bloodborne. So this is an incredibly interesting, albeit disturbing, unused boss found in Bloodborne. The boss can't actually be accessed through normal gameplay, as it was cut from the final release of the game. However, through data mining, many unused assets were found related to this boss. And the boss itself can even actually be fought in-game, although it's obviously not completed. It's thought though that this boss is most likely just a version of the Moon Presence boss, which is one of the final optional bosses in the game. But yeah, this thing is pretty grotesque and disturbing, even for Bloodborne standards. The entirety of the Angry Birds Tennis beta. So the beta version of Angry Birds Tennis is incredibly different from the final version that was eventually released. But altogether, the game is kind of a rough history. I mean, it was only released in North America and Mexico in February of 2020, only to be later discontinued on September 11th of 2020. And the only official way to download the game is to be in Zimbabwe. And even then, the game won't load when downloaded. And as for the beta content, well, as the title of this entry suggests, the beta is completely lost. But it's said that it would have looked very different from the final version that we got including different game modes, unique songs for characters, and different character bios, as well as many other changes that we might not ever know about unless a beta version of the game is ever found. And that about does it for part 2 of this iceberg. Also remember, if you are interested, hit the link in the description and check out World of Warships. Anyways, I'm Sourcebrew, and thank you all once again for watching.